Well, thank you. Uh, welcome, Temple University Japan campus. Um, Robert Gujarik from ICAS. Uh, brevity is a sort of wit, and I know you came here to listen to Michael, not to me. So I'll just say a few things. If you didn't get an invitation directly from us, uh, send me an email, give me a business card, I'll add you to the list. And two, I'm extremely happy to have Michael Chuchek. No one knows Japanese politics better than Michael. As I always say, you know the macro and the micro picture, and in between. So, without further ado, welcome, Michael. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone who's come out today. It's a beautiful day, and it's a pity to spend a little time in this room, uh, even though this is actually my home room. This is the room I teach in. Uh, I will be doing exactly the same thing here uh, in. Um, well, 18 hours. Uh, and uh, I was asked to provide an update on the state of Japanese politics. And I spent a long time uh, this winter thinking about it uh, and working toward what I wanted to say. Uh, and as we came into spring, and the, uh, it became clear that we're not going to have a uh, House of Representatives election. Uh, I was trying to think, okay, well, what is it that really characterizes the time that we're in? Uh, and uh, over the last few days, as the uh, diet session closed, I started to feel really down. And I started to feel that not much had been accomplished, and what had been accomplished was not very good. Uh, and for the first time, I felt as though I, I wasn't ready to do one of my comedy routines on Japanese politics, which is, for people who have seen my, my presentations before, I tend to like to tell jokes. But that I didn't feel that way about this last diet session uh, and uh, the, pr the progress of, of Japanese politics. And I decided, well, I'm, maybe I'm feeling that we're, we've entered the last third era of the law of makbo, as it is in the Japanese Buddhist tradition. Uh, when nothing works anymore, and, and what, what happens is not very, very pleasing. Or, if you're going from a Western perspective, we've entered the age of decadence in Japanese politics. Uh, and I said, okay, well, can I make that case? I've, are we now in a decadent state of Japanese politics? Well, here's my attempt at that. Uh, Looming over everything is the fact that we are nearing uh, the one-year anniversary of the assassination of uh, Prime Minister Abe. Right now, uh, people are waiting somewhere else here in Tokyo where another presentation is being done by YCAPS, uh, another group I do presentations for. This one uh, by uh, Abe's speechwriter, uh, Taniguchi Tomohiko, uh, is, will be an hour from now doing his presentation. And his is going to, he's going to be talking about the man. Uh, it is still a shattering break in the way that Japanese politics has been, at least not since the 1960s, when we did have assassination attempts on uh, Prime Minister Kishi and then the assassination of the head of the Socialist Party live on television. Uh, but that, this, th that uh, political violence is something that erupted last year uh, with the assassination attempt and then reenacted this year with the uh, pipe bomb uh, explosion at the rally that was held by the prime minister. That's something that uh, is looming over all of us, particularly uh, the prime minister uh, in terms of he has to deal with the long-term effects of the, the death of the one person who was uh, his, both his supporter and also uh, his nemesis in the first a few months of his uh, time in office. Okay, so the key, what were the key things that happened, in my view, uh, in the first half of the year? The first thing was something that didn't happen. We have not prepared for a House of Representatives election. And the entire political program of the winter was build, a buildup to that likelihood happening in the month of June, that there would be uh, the pa a, a very smooth passage of the budget, that would, there would be a, a wonderful Hiroshima summit, 
painting the prime minister in a glorious light as, a, as an international statesman, and then wham, we would go in to a House of Representatives or election. That did not happen, and that did not happen for what seemed minor technical reasons. What did happen in April, though, uh, was the emergence of a new force uh, in Japanese politics. The Ishin no Kai has always been strong in the area of Osaka, and uh, it has had mediocre success elsewhere. That success elsewhere uh, exploded in the April uh, unified elections, where in prefectural and local assemblies, they had a big boost in the number of seats that they won, uh, and had w also, in a by-election that was in Wakayama Prefecture for the House of Representatives seats, they won that over the LDP candidate. That was the uh, first image that I showed, was the happy faces of the folks uh, in, uh, in the Ishin camp, and the not-so-happy folks in the Wakayama office, uh, in including the bigwigs of Wakayama Prefecture, Seko and Nikai. Uh, and uh, won the, there's the second prefecture uh, for Ishin, Nara prefecture. Ishin suddenly became the, the force in Japanese politics opposing the LDP successfully and has taken on in the last few months uh, and in the last few weeks, uh, really, uh, the role of the main opposition party in Japan. That's not according to its seats in the House of Representatives, of course. But in terms of public image, we'll see when we look at the, the, the stats in terms of the current popularity of parties as measured by public opinion polls, and in terms of the amount of news that they're generating, they are certainly now much more active as the, as the opposition party. Uh, the third point from the, is the out of the blue and very significant sudden breakdown of relations inside Tokyo. Uh, between the Kometo and the LDP. Now, people who believe in conspiracies and in backstabbing might have been able to see this ahead of time because the head of the LDP in uh, Tokyo is Hagiyodia Koichi, who is fighting very hard to become head of the post-Abe faction, the former Abe faction, the Seiwakai. And he is also sees himself as a potential replacement for Pr Prime Minister Kishida. Kometo LDP cooperation is vital for the entire functioning of the LDP electoral machine. For have it break down somewhere is deeply wounding and deeply embarrassing for the person who is the president of the LDP, who is Kishida. That someone who wants to replace Kishida would mess up that relationship in what will be a very rich field for candidates. There, will be, there are currently 25 seats in Tokyo. In the next election, there will be 30 uh, because there is a shift due to population uh, rises in some places and, and falls in others. There is, this was a place where the coordination had to be very good and the coordination had to move smoothly, and instead it has completely broken down. That is a significant and interesting development because it opens the door for Ishin in many ways. Ishin is opening its own doors. Uh, it's going to be eventually uh, trying out, and I'll have the point in a second, uh, uh, pushing the Komeito out of the Kansai region. But first, for me in terms of my own sense of, of unease, Watching the immigration bills pass and uh, the LGBTQ uh, anti-discrimination legislation pass without any modification of the, uh, the legislation in a positive direction, and in fact modifications in a negative direction, uh, was for me, made me feel like, why were they going through the, this uh, exercise at all? When in fact the situation, in many ways, uh, for both immigrants and the LGBTQ community are actually worse after the, the passage of these so-called reform bills. Uh, there is no leader right now of the Sewakai. Uh, they've been fighting with each other uh, over who will succeed Abe, and there are various factions within the faction who are trying to maneuver their person to be the leader. Currently, ostensibly, there is a truce until after the, the one-year anniversary of the assassination of Abe Shinzo. And then they will go into 
the actual leadership fight that is uh, predicted to come. All I can say about is that is that every single person who is mentioned as a successor to Abe is, would be a very un, unfortunate person to become prime minister. Um, that is the, the, the ick factor when you look at the list of names is, is quite strong. Whether you're talking about the chief cabinet secretary Matsuno, or you're talking about Seko Hiroshige, or you're talking about uh, my, my personal favorite, Nishimura uh, Yasutoshi, who was the head who, of Japan's response to the COVID p- pandemic, and we all remember how good that was. Um, at least in his opinion, he went to Todai. He has a very high opinion of himself. It, it went great. Um, they are all fighting over uh, the, the, uh, over the corpse of, of Abe Shinzo for the, the control of the Sewakai, which, to be fair, gained three seats and three more members uh, in the by-elections in, election, in April. Uh, finally, uh, in the, not finally, in the, in, the, in the Constitutional Democratic Party, the ostensible main opposition party of Japan, uh, virtually no one there likes the leader. Somehow they had picked him, but currently they are, they are currently all complaining about how the party has done poorly under his leadership. And for, unfortunately, there does not seem to be a force within the, the party that is able to dislodge him in time for an election. And as I said, Ishin, uh, feeling its oats, has decided to take on the Komeito in the House of Representatives single seat member districts in the Kansai region and wipe them out of every single one. And it is very possible uh, that uh, LDP voters, instead of voting as they should for the Komeito candidates in those districts, will actually vote for the Ishin candidates and the Ishin candidates will win, which uh, would be deeply damaging to the Komeito and its image inside the rolling coalition. Finally, uh, in something of a development that is both surprising and not so surprising, Rengel, the largest labor organization, uh, is clearly uh, continuing its uh, un- unlikely march toward uh, becoming part of the groups that are under the big tent of the LDP. Uh, labor has a- backed for the last 50, 60 years nothing but losers uh, in, that, in terms of the only time it, ha- it backed winners was when it backed the DPJ back in 2009. But otherwise, it has, as an organization, been traditionally the back, main backers and the main supporters of Japan's opposition, which, me, which means it doesn't win. They invited uh, the prime minister to speak at their May Day rally. They did not invite the head of the CDPJ. So the Rengo's votes, which have been floating ever since the new Hope Party, uh, the Hope Party was developed in 2017, may end up uh, part of the grand coalition. Now, in terms of who's popular and who's not right now uh, after this diet session, uh, the LD and the April elections, the LDP's popularity fell by several percentage points over its general average, uh, which has been around 38%. Uh, but in the latest polls, it's down near 35 And Ishin uh, is now officially, according to the public opinion polls, the most popular opposition party in Japan, with uh, working on its momentum and on its very populist message of cutting the budget, uh, lowering taxes, and uh, appealing to that populist vote that heretofore has not been very active, uh, except for the time when Koizumi was in power. Ishin is searching for and grabbing the votes of the white collar 25% of the electorate that CDPJ has been hoping to hold on to. Uh, the Ishin is appealing to that group in the manners of dress, in, in the manners of their advertising, Everything there is to attract this white collar, mid-management or, 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 or younger management vote that feels resentful, that feels they, they deserve something better in life, and one of the things they would like uh, is lower income taxes. In the plethora of all kinds of, of oppositions, uh, opposition parties, uh, there is no clear direction that I can see in the way that they're moving. 
This used to be the anti-NHK party. It is now called Women's Leg Legislators 48, just like it was a girls group. Um, it, it, it's literally called that. Uh, they changed their name from anti-NHK. Uh, but the big winners uh, this winter uh, has been Don't Know, No Party, which has increased its, uh, its fraction of the uh, electorate that simply don't know what they're supporting anymore. Uh, it used to be down uh, around 40, it's now around 45%. So in terms of who's popular, we would say uh, Ishin, uh, and everybody else is on the downside. I wanted to say about, as I was saying, uh, uh, Rengo, the labor organization, did invite uh, the prime minister. Uh, so will the LDP get that part of the main opposition vote uh, through extension, we will see. Now, in another aspect of, of my feelings of demoralization and the idea that Japan is entering an era of decadence is the continuing decay of elections on, on the local level. We had the unified local elections this spring, and though, even though it was predicted, it was still deeply demoralizing to see how far and the interest in elections has fallen. Voting rates were down, that's to be expected, but it's the participation rates. It's getting persons to actually want to run for office, which uh, showed continued dramatic falls. In the t and here are some, some numbers to back up uh, this sense of, you know, when local officials were made uh, elected offices, thanks to the United States occupation, was that a bad idea? And are we, are we, we giving up on elected democracy on the local levels? Well, in terms of the, uh, in the mayoral races, and this is for mayors, 28% of the cities that had mayoral races and 56% of the towns and villages that had mayoral races had only a single candidate show up and register, pay, pay the deposit, and wait, and then no election happened. They got their deposit back 100%, and they got a job. Uh, so that was 56% of the time in the towns and villages, and 28% of the time in the cities. 1,000 seats of the 373 uh, towns and villages assemblies uh, were filled without any election. Uh, that's 30% of all the seats. So again, 30% of the seats had no election associated with it. And 21 municipalities, which is three times as many as, as only th four years ago, uh, had fewer candidates register than were seats than there were seats available. So that there are the the uh, the assembly itself is, is incomplete. 25% uh, of the prefectural assembly seats were given away simply to the person who showed up and registered. That's one quarter, and that's nationwide in 41 prefectures. In Namanashi Prefecture, right next door, 62% of the seats were just given away. <coughs> Democracy is not working well on the local level. Uh, here in Setagaya, we, we had 72 candidates for 50 seats, uh, and we had someone running against the mayor, an LDP <coughs> member against the mayor, so we had a very, very lively election here. Uh, but nationwide, uh, it, it's moribund or in fact dead. Uh, and you can't have a good national electoral uh, system if you have a very weak or dying uh, local uh, system because that's where you do the training and that's where, where the future national uh, candidates are going to be uh, who are going to challenge the system of legacy candidates that exist in the national level. If you don't have people with any kind of experience, uh, then how are they going to take on persons who have, whose families have been in a seat for generations? You have a question? I, I guess I can take a question at this, this is time. This very interesting and surprising. And in your opinion, which will be the dynamics getting to this? So it's because there's kind of a strong local power that doesn't allow other people to uh, get a, themselves as a candidate, or there are not incentives for people to uh, to get, uh, to get in the election. I'll try to answer that in the, question, in the, in the Q and A time, uh, and uh, uh, please then ask that question to me again. Yeah. Uh, 
some of the things that demoralized me. Okay, the first was the Immigration Act, which dealt with the problem, supposedly dealt with the problem of people being in detention uh, for long periods of time by eliminating their right, one of their rights of appeal so that they would be in detention for a shorter amount of time before being expelled from the country. That's the kind of thinking that for me is decadent. That's not a solution to the problem. That's, that, that's, that, that's making things uh, less humane and, and, le and, and just cruel, uh, just taking away their, one of their, their, their rounds of appeal. The Sexual Minorities Act uh, was, m was amended in terms of its language twice, uh, where it previously had said that we would be fighting uh, discrimination. It was changed to there would be no unfair discrimination allowed, which is, again, what is, oh, so there's certain kinds of discrimination aren't completely fair. Okay. We, we won't fight those things. And some, there's no penalties for unfair discrimination. There are no, and there's no definition of what unfair means. Uh, so uh, what had been a bit, uh, much stronger been, but was weakened uh, to the point of actually saying that in, in certain circumstances, discrimination is entirely correct. This bill was also fought with an absolutely cynical campaign of social panic about uh, transgender pe persons going into public restrooms. Uh, basically the idea that men with penises would go into places where women are uh, and that this would be destructive of Japan's social fabric. The Yomiri Shinbun and the Sankei Shinbun had drummed up this social panic, which was basically, of course, on social media, but main, mainstream media took it up as well. Uh, the defense defending, uh, spending increase that has been talked about, Japan increasing its defense spending up to 2% of GDP. That's that uh, major rise that has been lauded by uh, Washington DC and all kinds of, of commentators. The first uh, tranche of that, the, the increase that came with this year's budget was done with absolutely farcical, absolutely ridiculous accounting. It, and even the Omiru Shimbun which normally finds no fault at all in the LDP prime minister, set editorialized against the way that this spending bill was written and the way it was passed by the majorities of, in, of the ruling coalition. This, the, the spending increase is absolutely, it's fantabulous. It, has, it, is, it, it, it simply makes up where money is coming from. And it passed through the diet. And nobody could stop it. And in terms of more recently, uh, Japan has strong rules against uh, exporting uh, materials that can be used for killing people. Those rules are being watered down as we speak. Uh, and it has been a relatively important part of the general mix of ideas that Japan can present as a part of its image on an international level. That there are some things we just won't do. Well, we'll do them now. Uh, and this is to benefit uh, Japan's defense industries. Now, one of the reasons why uh, the election was called off was because of the scandals of the Kishida administration. The, the only scandals that I can really uh, identify are the fact that his son, who was his political secretary, as most diet members in legacy seats do. They, he, he hired his son to be his secretary. Abe was his father's secretary. All kinds of legacy, legacy candidates spend times as the political secretary of their, their fathers or mothers in rare cases. Uh, in the case of Koizumi, it was his sister. Uh, the, the use of family members and nepotism is entirely okay, but for some reason, because the young man set up a photo shot on the staircase where they do the cabinet shot of all the cabinet members in their, in their morning coats or in their silk dresses, and they did a joke shot. That was a, a terrible thing, and so Kishida had to fire his son, and suddenly he was, the, he was under a cloud. And the other supposed scandal is a few folks 
managed to uh, register the wrong bank account uh, for themselves when they registered their My Number card. Japan's version of the social, social security card, but a very, very weak and still controversial and still uh, something that people try to avoid having. In fact, I didn't know this, but you can turn in your My Number card and it, there is no obligation that you get a new one. Uh, and 350,000 people did that last year. Uh, the My Number card uh, is a, a very good idea it's, it, if you're going to try to increase uh, government revenues. It, helps, it will help uh, the government track down all kinds of bank accounts where people are squirreling away cash uh, so that they don't get charged it f uh, in their income taxes. Uh, that would be really helpful uh, to help balance Japan's uh, major budget deficit. Uh, but people obviously want to keep that cash away from the tax man. And under the guise of there being terrible errors, a few hundred, uh, in the record keeping, uh, the My Number card system is bringing down the reputation of the Kishida administration. Even though the registrations are not done by the national government, they're done by local ward offices. Uh, so no, no government bureaucrats were involved, no polit local national politicians. Nevertheless, it's a black eye uh, on the Kishida administration. And I would like to say that's another aspect of decadence, is that we can get all in a fluster about what are really minor things. And, uh, and we can see the political classes knock somebody down or knock someone out uh, through what is basically trivial and nonsensical uh, items. And I, as a contrast to that, I want to recall the absolute plundering of the public that it took place under the Abe administration without Abe and his people really suffering any major significant damage. Whether you talk about the Moritomo Gakuen scandal, where a piece of land was given away for 10% of its worth by the finance ministry, and then that finance ministry had to reimburse that 10%, uh, because this person was a, a, a protege of uh, Mrs. Abe. Or the Kakigakuen scandal, where an unneeded veterinary college was built in Imabari uh, in order to uh, satisfy the ego of Mr. Kake, who went to UC USC with Mr. Abe. Uh, or well, shall we talk about the Abigan uh, antiviral scandal, buying hundreds of millions of pills that do do nothing. Why? Because one of his golf partners, that is to say Abe's golf partners, was the head of the CEO of Fujifilm, which produced this worthless drug, and which during the middle of the pandemic, hundreds of millions of pills were bought. Or Pezzi Computer, where the uh, CEO uh, uh, plundered the uh, investment funds of the Kante. Well, what else is there? Abe no mask? The tiny little masks made of cloth that proved to be not only uh, in it, useless, but one of the three companies uh, that was hired had a single employee, and that person had never produced masks before, and they was given th one third of the entire budget for pre providing masks for the entire population of Japan. Or the big one for me uh, is the Linear 2 Shinkansen. Uh, a project that was started by the man who, bought, who brought us Abe Shinzo, uh, Kasai Yoshiyuki, uh, uh, who decided he wanted to have a tunnel dug from, all the way from Shinagawa to Nagoya, and in it, run it through it, uh, a linear motor car. Oh yes, we will get to Nagoya very much faster than we can today, but you're still only in Nagoya. Uh, you're, not in the, you're not in Kyoto, you're not in Osaka, and it's going to cost 9 trillion yen. Now, it was supposed to be entirely paid for by the private sector, and that's what it, when it was okayed. But somehow, after the hole started to be dug by uh, the person who bankrolled Abe's return to power in 2009, suddenly, that's Kasayoshi Yuki, uh, suddenly uh, it turned out they didn't have enough money to finish the hole, and indeed the Zaito, the, the, the FILP, the Fiscal Investment Loan Program, was suddenly found to have extra funds to the tune of three trillion yen to pay for one third of the entire project. But he didn't have his child take a picture on the stairs of the Kante because he had no children, one. But 
uh, his folks uh, did not really ever uh, have a lot of trouble for all of this kind of stuff. Oh, Mikitani's thing. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Mikitani was on the Industrial Competitive Council, and they were giving suggestions on a way to do that third arrow of structural reform. And he said, a great thing would be if you could sell medical devices over the internet. Funny thing about Mikitani, he owns a company. It's called Rakten. Uh, and it was precisely for the purposes of enriching his own company that he gave that proposal. When the council that he was on rejected the proposal, he said, he went into Abe and said, I will resign from the council unless this thing is, if this thing is not approved. It was approved. Get on, your shingi, on his shingikai, you could get what you want. That also demoralizes me and makes me think that we're in an age of decadence. So that's my state of where uh, Japanese politics is uh, in uh, the summer of 2023. And that's it. An age of decadence. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Let me take advantage of the chair to ask one short question, and then we'll open it to the floor. Sure. You went through a list of what uh, troubled you, disappointed you. Uh, mm -hmm. The anti the immigration issue, I can see. In very few countries, immigration is popular. Mm -hmm. you know, even in the UK, where both the monarch and the prime minister of immigrant background, it doesn't sell. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the PM. Yes, of course. Yes. From Germany, the from India, so. Uh, but the anti-LGBT thing, I mean, Japan is free of monotheistic Middle Eastern religions. Yes. Uh, they start with the no, homosexuality isn't been an issue. Uh, why is there so much pushback? I think it has partly to do with the actual fight inside uh, the Seiwakai. Uh, the Seiwakai is where many of the politicians who have uh, been uh, saying uh, th things about transgender people or gay persons uh, have their have their home, uh, and uh, that is the most conservative of the factions of the LDP, uh, and or, or retrograde, if you want, of the factions of the LDP. Uh, so you have people like Sugita Mio and uh, I don't know and. Takashi Sanai is not a part, but um, Takeshi Sanai. Uh, but that's maybe part of what's going on. Uh, please recall, though, uh, how Kishida himself handled the situation in regards to his, uh, his special advisor to the, the prime minister. When, one, when the special advisor to the prime minister said in an interview, I don't think I can live near a gay couple. I will feel really uncomfortable if they moved in next to me. That man was gone. And the next, I think it's two days later or three days later, in a very, very public way, having all the remaining Hosakan, all the remaining advisor, special advisors to the prime minister there, and bringing in representatives of the transgender community, representatives of the gay and lesbian communities, and sitting them down in the Kante and talking with them very publicly in front of the cameras. So uh, it has something to do also uh, with the uh, uh, isolating Kishida uh, a, a, within the LDP, I think as well. But it's just it, there. It's also just because they can, uh, and they there is. One also has to remember that the percentage of people who actually vote for the LDP is very small, so very small numbers of persons moved by prejudice can make a big difference within the LDP. The LDP, even in its glory, which is now, uh, only attracts 18% of the voters. 36% of the people who show up, but 18% of the voters. That, if you can move a few tens of thousands here and there, uh, you can be a mover and shaker within the LDP in terms of, of, of votes. So it, there's a matter of leverage in, and prejudice. Thank you. Uh, Questions to Carl first and then here. Kind of a conceptual follow up to what Rob was just asking. When you said that um, you're rather ill defined on the notion of unfair sexual discrimination, mm -hmm. how do they define sexual and how do they define unfair? And I'm thinking, like, for instance, with Sekahara or Chikang, the train would be considered a form of 
sexual discrimination, or is that out of category? Are they, in other words, are they, is the tail that wags the dog here basically LGBTQ issues? Basically, it's LGBTQ issues because there you can have prejudice. Uh, and prejudice is the, the engine for popular, for one of the two engines for populism. The other is tax cuts. Uh, tax cuts are taken over by Ishin, but there are plenty of people in Ishin who say intolerant things too. Uh, it, it's really a contest, uh, and in some in some places Ishin is winning in, in in terms of saying inappropriate things that that get you into the newspaper and, and people saying you shouldn't say that. Uh, it, it is, I mean, one of the things that's been nice for folks who look at Japanese politics is that one of the things we haven't been doing is dealing with Japan's Trump. Uh, or dealing with Japan's Bolsonaro. We don't have that character yet, uh, where uh, there, uh, there is a populist who, who plays with prejudice, and, and where cruelty is the, it, it is the point. Uh, that hasn't happened. But nevertheless, there are little Trump-like creatures that are, are wandering around uh, who have their own little niches, uh, and, and that's what we're hearing. I hope that's an answer to your question. I don't have an answer as to what, what they believe is sexual. Well, I want to ask you on unfair. In the Japanese, is there a nuance or an ambiguity with that? Well, this, it's simply that before it was a, 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 against all discrimination. Now it's against unfair discrimination. Going from all discrimination to unfair. Assuming, which, which because of the use of that, that there is such thing as fair discrimination. Is that a legal definition or just rhetoric? Uh, if it's in the law, it's a legal definition. If it's passed by the, the diet, it's, it's, not, it's not a rhetorical issue at all. Because it, it then has to be, uh, can it be used in a court of law? Can you sue someone? Uh, can someone be arrested for, or, or can someone be cited? If you have this, this, this wishy-washy unfair word in there, it becomes very difficult to take legal action. And Japan's judges are not n known for sticking their necks out on, the pet on behalf of justice. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, um, thank you for that very interesting comment. Could you please just introduce yourself? Oh, sure. So I'm Sophie Moore and I'm here from the British Embassy. Um, so I appreciate it for the British reference. Um, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> a little bit depressing on the state of Japanese politics. Um, just a point on the LGBT bill, I thought it was really interesting as well, the point around um, raising awareness can only be done when everyone, all citizens, feel comfortable, mm. which I think is really interesting about the limiting factor of how much you can do. But really interesting for me is what do you think this means for Kishida's long term longevity and the people living in it? What are the aspects of the decadence that I, is actually longer terms for uh, prime ministers? Uh, I don't know if Suga actually r resigned too early. Uh, that there might be, that if he had just, okay, my, my popularity rating is 29% in the latest polls. Normally th below 30%, that's the death zone. I should resign was his immediate reaction and the way he, he reacted to the fall. Uh, maybe he could have pulled it out if he had stayed. Now, what does that have to do with your question? What it has to do with my question is that uh, since Abe became prime minister the second time, the answer to the question, the, the, the secondary question about why do you, okay, yes, you support the prime minister and the cabinet, why? The answer, when, since Abe became prime minister, has been because I can't see anybody else. There's no tekito na shito ga inai. And that was never a big answer before. Uh, but now it is the main answer. I simply can't see anyone else who would be appropriate. And that, has been, that was true when Suga became prime minister. And if it's true and still now with Kishida that his number one reason uh, for him uh, being prime minister is I, there's nobody else appropriate. Uh, that sense of demoralization, even among the supporters, uh, is for me uh, an aspect of my, my overall feeling of decadence. Yeah, so in the case of Kishida, as long as he stays relatively popular, uh, he may have a very, very long time. 
and it's, and it's certainly as, as, as if the Sewakai uh, is engaged in internal warfare, as it has been doing. Um, yes, Gibor, Dan Martinetko, thanks very much for your talk, uh, Michael. Um, I've got several small questions. I was wondering why um, you felt that uh, the relationship between the uh, headship, the, um, uh, the mayor of uh, Tokyo and the uh, LDP relations were, I mean, I know they're relevant, they're, they're important and they're telling, but it's been, I mean, the relationships between the LDP and the head of the the Tokyo government have not been good for some time now. So is there... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know where I was talking about Governor Kweke. Michael was talking about the Kometo-LDP relationship. Ah, uh, the Kometo. Yes, you said that as well. That, that was my second question, actually. Yeah. Maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, uh, the... the, the uh, in the case of the Kometo, there, there, there's a complete breakup. Yes, I did notice that. Um, I, I was wondering how um, you thought, I mean, you, you suggest that maybe the uh, Kometo members could start voting for Ishin no Kai. Um, no, no, the LDP would vote for Ishin no Kai. LDP members, uh, uh, LDP members in, 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 because in nine districts, in, 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 all, oh, in nine districts uh, the LDP does not run a candidate. Uh, and instead, a Komeito candidate is run. Yeah. The LDP persons, voters in that <coughs> district, voters. are asked, yeah. please vote for the Komeito. Yeah. Uh, and the, the Komeito person, not the Komeito party. You can vote for the LDP in the, in the proportional list, but in this district, vote for the Komeito candidate. Yeah. And that's in, in nine districts nationwide. That's, the, that's one of the trade-offs that is made. Uh, Six of those are in the Kansai, which is the home of the of Ishin. And Ishin has been uh, has been has been has been sort of iffy about its relationship uh, with the Komeito because it controls Osaka and it controls the Osaka Prefectural Assembly with help from from the Komeito. By declaring that it's going to take on uh, the Komeito and wipe out their 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 district members. Uh, the, they, are, they have only nine seats, district seats, at all in the House of Reps, uh, House of Representatives. Uh, Ishin is, is, is challenging uh, the, the coalition. Yes, yes, now I understand now, because I thought you were suggesting that the Komeito, the, the uh, voters, people who voted for the Komeito, but from the Komeito party, I mean, from the Sokagaka and all that, might start voting now. No, 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 it's, it's the LDP voters in those districts who have who've been told by, their, by the LDP, Go ahead, vote for the Komeito yeah, here, right. uh, vote candidate here. Uh, that that uh, that Ishin voters uh, will, uh, an, an Ishin candidate will actually attract those LDP voters. Yes, I can see that happening. Yeah. Yes, very much. Yeah, and I thought your um, statistics on the uh, local elections were really uh, very interesting. Uh, since when have you noticed um, that happening? Oh, that, that it, it happens every four years. The the uh, the they, they 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 print a post mortem. And every year, the or every four years, the results are worse. They're worse. Yeah, they they are decaying year by year. Of course, the populations are decaying as well, and people are getting older, and they don't want to serve on the assembly anymore. That I mean there there's, there are some structural issues that cannot be dealt with. There were some other questions. Uh, yeah, I think here you raise your hand. Here, so you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Heather. Thank you for that. I'm curious. Why is there a lack of interest in politics and maybe even current events in Japan? I can't speak uh, in terms of broad social movements. Uh, I can say, though, uh, that uh, part of it has to do with uh, the electoral systems uh, rewarding people for failure. Uh, the, I think a great amount of turnover could happen and excitement could happen if uh, the Fukkatsu Tosen, which is the zombie re revival through the proportional list in the House of Representatives, were banned. And that were, you, if you ran in a district seat, it was either to win or to lose. And you had to fight like hell, and if you lost, you lost. In the current system, uh, the candidates for the main parties are double listed. Uh, so that if they run in a district against a strong candidate and lose to that candidate, that's fine because I'm also on the party list and I can pop back up uh, in, uh, 
and that's why they're called zombie members of the diet, uh, even though I'm a loser in, the in my own home district, I was on the party list, and so I got back into the, the diet anyway. That keeps, that, that prevents new blood from getting into the, into the system. Uh, if you can be double listed, you, ha you have a backstop, you have an insurance policy. That, uh, I think I, that actually makes people less interested in politics because the same, it's the same crowd. Ca election after an election after an election. And you have the those who won in the districts and then the zombies in the proportional seats. And it's the same bunch. And they say the same things on television. And they don't have to change their message. And they don't have to do anything. Uh, if they, they lost in their districts, they, they don't think, I have to rethink my policies. Maybe I'm not doing the right thing. No, I can just be the same person I was before. And that, I think, has a demoralizing downward effect on all of Japanese politics and overall. And I, I can see Dr. Steele is, is, is thinking, I have a rebuttal to that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you have a question? Yeah, there are lots of other reasons to be demoralized. <laughs> uh, Mark and then Kathori Sensei. Michael, thank you. Mark Davidson, uh, formerly of the U.S. Embassy, not the private sector here in Tokyo. Thank you for a fabulously incisive presentation. This may be slightly related to Heather's very good question. You talked about personalities and polling and popularity. Not so much about policy. Mm. What are, maybe I should say, are there competing visions for the future of Japan? Above the feudal internecine fights, what's, what's next for Japan? What are those visions? I generally, when I, think, when I ask that question, um, I tend to think of a long bar graph. And you have on it uh, right-wing conservatism, and then you have on the other end a radical leftism. The LDP is actually right about over here. And then there's the Communist Party over here. And then all the other parties have to fit in this tiny space, Bec especially if you're talking about economic policy. Uh, there are parties that are to the right of, of the LDP in terms of economic parties. This actual political space for discussion and debate is actually very narrow. And it, what happens is, is that policies are largely identical, except when you get to these valence issues, like how do we treat uh, sexual minorities? How do we treat immigrants who are minorities by their numbers? Uh, those become the, the inflammatory issues, whereas the rest of the policy vision is limited, first of all, by, all, I, uh, by uh, a lack of ideology, and secondly, by lack of options. Uh, you cannot forget Japan's immense debt. You, can't, you, can, you can pretend it's not there, but you can't forget it. Uh, and all kinds of ideas that you might have uh, in terms of changing policy. Ishin has all kinds of great ideas about cutting taxes, increasing spending, uh, and uh, the LDP just says, that's fantasy. You can't do both of those things. And the Ishin is, is trying to play on the uh, possibility that people might vote for them for fantastic, irrational policies. Uh, but the actual real policies are quite limited in the range. And there's really not a lot of play there, is the way I always look at it. The LDP in the United States would be the Communist Party. In, 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 in a uh, European nation, it would be the Social Democratic Party of a European country, in, based on its, on its economic policies, by, by definitely. And many of its, and, and, and it, so it's, it's it, policy's not where it happens. It's, there's, and so there doesn't have to actually have to be a vision. I do, I would say one thing. The people who did have vision uh, were frequently uh, enlightened bureaucrats. But we have fewer and fewer of them nowadays because of the uh, reforms that happened in 2014, which gave politicians control over the careers of bureaucrats. Bureaucrats more and more are uh, beholden uh, to uh, political persons. They are more courtiers now than officials. Uh, and so there's, uh, that the prime minister is now much more a king and, they, and he has his court of favored of officials. Uh, and this, this was particularly true during the long Abe period. 
not so, I don't know if Kishida has favorite officials that, whom he dotes upon, uh, but he certainly has the tools in terms of the reforms of 2014 to have that kind of relationship. That used to not exist, and very frequently in the past, it was actually the ideas for reform came from within the bureaucracy. Well, thank you, uh, Ashwag is my name. I'm a, one of the former bureaucrats, and now a sitting retired person. Uh, from the good old days. <laughs> from the good old days. In, in one of the your slides, uh, it showed that there are so many political parties in yes. Japan. Yes. Uh, but we had a, a political reform in the 90s. One of in the fact, this is the 30th was, anniversary of those, of those the, years. The yeah. objective was to have two political parties system, but uh, it did not happen for all kinds of reasons, and I, and I know that. Yeah, but, uh, is not. And we all thought the two political system was an ideal system, whereby US or UK all have two political party system. But now, we have a multi-party system, and the US, uh, we have a uh, polarization of the of, 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 of the politics. You know, and just yesterday I saw an opinion essay on the Washington Post saying that our two political party system isn't working. We need more parties. Now that's a very interesting sort of a, sort of a, a phenomenon. So so if you were to advise the political scientists in the U.S., do you think? multi-party system in Japan is working well, or it's, it's a sort of chaotic situation? Uh, is it, uh, sh should, we, should we go back and argue for a two-political party system in Japan? I don't know. Well, I think the United States would, I think the politics of the United States would be absolutely improved if it had a mixed-member majoritarian system where you have uh, the votes of those who are on the losers in the districts are not wasted uh, as they are in the American system. If you, ha if you vote in a congressional district, you're either your Republican or your Democrat wins. And everyone you vote for, for if it's a, a Democratic seat, everybody who voted for the Republican, their votes are negated. In the Japanese system, because you have the proportional party lists, those votes for a, a Republican can be handed over to the party and seats can be allocated in the mixed, majority, mixed member majoritarian system. I think that would really change American politics in a very, very, it, it would be a moderating force uh, because the, the, the relation, it, it, there, it would not be so polarized uh, because you could now, uh, and also it would bring new blood into politics in, in America through the proportionalist, again, without having Fukatsutosan, without having zombie candidates, I think that I think that has to go in both it, wherever it, wherever it hap, exists. It should be it should be banned. And indeed, the Komeito bans it for its own candidates. Komeito does not allow for Fukatsutosan. Uh, but in terms, yeah, a multi-party, a, a, a multi, a mixed system rather than a first past to post post system would really help in the United States take down the temperature a lot, I think. Yeah, and I do admire Japanese politics for its lack of polarization. And uh, that, that there is not that acrimony and that, and that hatred and that willingness uh, to do just about anything, except in certain members uh, uh, who got into the diet uh, by strange ways, like Mio, Sugita Mio, who nobody voted for but who got in because she was on the proportional list, the last person picked off the proportional list in, in the uh, Chugoku region for the LDP. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. Nishimura, yeah. editorial writer of Hokkaido Shimbun. Thank you for the last Prime Minister Kishida uh, identifies himself as affiliated to Kochikai mm. uh, group. Yeah. And, but uh, it is said that the Kishida administration is strongly affected by the Seiwa Kai mm. and you know, former uh, Abe's uh, faction. So how do you think, uh, how do you think the Kishida administration is affected by, the, uh, uh, how much, how, much, how strong 
Well, the Sewakai forced him to take Matsuno as his uh, chief cabinet secretary. It is very bizarre to me that the prime minister and the chief cabinet secretary are from two different factions. And uh, that, uh, that certainly made uh, uh, Kishida look like uh, the puppet of the Sewakai for the, until uh, Abe himself uh, died uh, because Abe could just say something and Abe's faction would just say and then Kishida, instead of having a strong, a strong face toward that pressure, also had to think that Matsuno's right behind, my, right behind me. Because the chief cabinet secretary normally is supposed to be the same faction as the prime minister. The chief cabinet secretary is the prime minister's wife the person who fluffs him up and makes him look good and, and, and prepares him, and when he says something stupid, takes him back into the back corner into the closet and says, don't you ever say that again. Uh, but now he's got a deadly enemy as that, in that role, in Matsuno. Uh, so yeah, the Sewakai has a lot of influence on him for as long as this cabinet exists. One of the reasons to have the election was to dump this cabinet and pro most likely get out of that relationship that he's in. But right now, he doesn't have any choice right now. His government is run by the Sewakai, by a Sewakai member. Do you think the Kishida cannot be independent from? Unless he wins a big election and the, and the LDP does well in the election, uh, which was the whole plot, uh, and uh, indeed until uh, Hagiyuda, who is also of the Sewakai, uh, destroyed the Kometo uh, LDP alliance here in, in Tokyo. Uh, and things started to go, go haywire as regards the plan for the election. Yeah, I don't think that, that I, without an election uh, reshuffling the cards, uh, I don't think Kishida can, can shake off the Sewakai. Certainly the death of Abe removed a giant looming shadow that was over him. That's for sure. Uh, he could stand up and be his own man. Nevertheless, he still has the cabinet that he, that he was given in his first attempt to become prime minister. Yes. Uh, yes, so my question is more related towards immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, maybe about a month ago, I read an article about uh, a change in the uh, technical ah. visa status uh, where there's, there's a lot more categories in the two-tier system. What's your opinion about that? And like, uh, how do you feel, does this change the overall arc of, I guess, immigration uh, and path to long-term residency and path to citizenship here in this country? It is um, cynical uh, gamesmanship and showmanship that has absolutely no effect on overall immigration. It is there to have the appearance of actually doing work. Uh, and I can say that because the reforms that have happened, for, uh, that have expanded these new categories, have resulted in uh, the immigrations of fewer than 100 individuals. Uh, the, the, it is, they are talked about in the newspapers. It seems like something is changing, but the increases in the categories are, uh, the criteria for, for getting in are so uh, stringent that the actual number of persons affected is very, very small. So it's, it's political theater and uh, it's not indicating a change in attitude. It is just simply pretending to work, diet members pretending to work. So uh, I'm sorry if I can ask a follow-up. Follow, follow it up. As that was a very your... nasty negative answer for me, but I have, I have no, nasty no, no, negative I, views of that. I, I understand. I, as foreigners, what is our responsibility you know, for other people who may not be as fortunate as us uh, for a path to long-term residency and citizenship? That is not a question I'm qualified to answer. All I know is that the most recent change that was proposed, uh, increasing uh, the uh, numbers of persons who are eligible for permanent residency, 
was a further increase in the racist policy of allowing persons who have Japanese blood in their veins to come in uh, to Japan. Now you don't, it's not, it, the uh, special visa status is not extended to grandchildren, is now extended to great-grandchildren of an original Japanese immigrant from Japan can come back now. So the, uh, the kinds of things that are changing uh, are, so, are demoralizing to the extent that I just really don't know what to say. There's really, the, the, the reforms uh, of, of immigration uh, are, 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 the only thing that can truly reform uh, immigration is just people showing up and doing the jobs that need to be done. And don't look to the government, but act, just actual individuals showing up is the way that immigration will reform itself. I have a short follow-up question on this. You know, the government, I think, issued a list of 100 universities from which, if you're a graduate of, you get kind of a fast track to get a job. Now, I believe they used a ranking system. Mm -hmm. And out of these 100 universities, I think there were only two Japanese universities. What does it say when the government itself validates a list that says Japanese education is not good? Did someone think of this? No. Well, yes, someone did think of it, but that person didn't have the power to change that, 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 that policy. Uh, the, the consequences of what's being done are not, off, are not often calculated. Uh, and that's you know, the reforms in the immigration law. Uh, for example, the, the uh, there is the, the, the foreign trainees program, which is rife with abuse, uh, which, was, which uh, has thousands of the workers fleeing from their jobs, which are low paying, slave-like conditions, no actual training being done, they're being used as cheap labor and having their passports taken away. Uh, this program was a shambles. So what did the administration do? It doubled the size of the program because without any other major changes. It just increased, the, it doubled the number of people who could be allowed in on it. When, no, no, that's not a reform. Uh, immigration is just, is just an area where, where the uh, current administration doesn't, do, well, the, the, the LDP has, and it's, has not done well. Other well, questions from this side, we'll try to balance it. <laughs> the left okay. and the right. So you have one question and then one question here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very very interesting. Uh, uh, talk. Uh, <coughs> and what I'm reading well, like we had the outstanding question on why the local, the power dynamics affected the, the local uh, politics. And one, a new one, is like these are all like let's call it scandals, or could be could fall into the area of let's say alleged corruption. Mm -hmm. And I get that your message is that. You could look at it as something new because the decadence is something that 20 years ago we didn't have in Japan and it's happening now, or we had it and we're scattered away like these ones, not really going to the public. Okay, the, the scandals and corruption have existed from the very beginning, uh, and a great deal of self dealing has existed to the great, uh, uh, from the beginning. Uh, Japanese political commentators, however, noted that under the, under the Abe administration, there was a privatization of, of state assets, uh, and that was a historical, that, was, that really marked the Abe administration versus previous kinds of corruption. Now, corruption is a great thing. Uh, corruption gets things done. Uh, it's the, the grease that gets otherwise difficult things past. Uh, when I uh, had a child who needed to go into daycare, uh, well, I had to find a way to get a gift to a member of the local assembly uh, because there were no daycare center spots. And suddenly, once that gift arrived, there were daycare center spots. Yeah, and things happen because of corruption. Uh, it's a good thing sometimes, it, it, uh, well, at least for the individual. Uh, but in terms of uh, the, the issue with the, the Abe administration was, was, was its high moral standards and, uh, uh, for others, but not for themselves. It was just, it was just, it was galling. Yeah. 
Mayor Daley of Chicago reportedly said once that there's two types of corruption. One is you, have, you build a bridge, you get a commission, and a great bridge is built. He says then there's the other type, you get money, a bridge is built, and it collapses. And that's really bad corruption. So there's a quality aspect. Yes, there is. There's absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So uh, just, I wanted to go back to you can the book. introduce yourself. Um, Iris Stevens, I'm a sports economics professor at Temple. And I also, a long time ago, studied a lot about Nakasone and Takeshita. So it's really interesting to me, and I, I thought the presentation was good. If you could put the slide back up of the uh, local participation rates, mm -hmm. so I don't have to look at the corruption anymore. Um, <laughs> I thought this was really interesting. And, um, uh, the question in one point, and maybe you can elaborate on. So we all know Japan is more of a top-down political system. So I'm more curious about the bottom-up. And looking at this is, and again, it's fantastically interesting. So I'm wondering, aging population and people moving to the cities, and um, how that affects in here, or what you thought it was in here going on, if you can elaborate a little more. Or the, the point I was really interested in, does anybody really care in Japanese pol 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 politics? Are they really making an effort, or what are the efforts to try and maybe fix this? Because we know this is continuing. And it's probably been continuing from the 80s, 90s, and going on. And then just the last point was uh, Ron Emanuel, ambassador to the USA, spoke here in, I think, January. Mm -hmm. And he said this really good point was in America, the governors are really interesting in leading to the presidency. And he found that in Japan, it was the mayors who were like the governors. But the problem was is the mayors had no real way to get into the, the political system. So am I kind of combining the two? Is there a mayor or is there somebody or something that's working from the bottom up or trying to fix some of these issues for the overall Japan, not the top down? In terms of political uh, participation and political uh, number of political candidates, uh, there are folks here and there who have ideas about how to get uh, more candidates. One of the things would be uh, to have more women in the assemblies. Uh, the, I, I don't have the statistics here, but the st it is staggering the number of local assemblies uh, that have no women in them. Uh, uh, I think it was with this election that finally all of the prefectures uh, had at least one woman in the prefectural assembly. I think that that, uh, that, uh, the, that was actually established with this particular election. Uh, if we had more women candidates, there'd be more candidates overall. Uh, but uh, it is said to be an extremely hostile environment for women to work in. Uh, and, that ha and women are providing uh, the, the labor that men uh, previously did not, did not previously supplied. Uh, in terms of the death of electoral uh, politics on the local level, I'm not really sure what one can do. Uh, you could try the Singapore model, which is pay legislators a lot of money, uh, so people are interested in getting that money. Uh, but most of these uh, local uh, local municipalities are dirt poor uh, and are desperately dependent upon grants from the national government in order to st keep their uh, functions alive. So uh, do you want to be in charge of a municipality which is scrambling for cash all the time? No. You don't want, to be, you don't want that burden on yourself. So I can understand why very few people want to run. It's, it's, I don't think there's a really easy solution or, or any kind of uh, simple solution. Is there any policies? Anybody doing anything? Is there anything? Just sort of just, just letting it like, like next election is going to be worse. Yeah. And the top doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so then the last part would be any mayor, like he, he was referencing, I think the mayor of Osaka. Anybody who may be surprising me? <laughs> Anyways, I'm just throwing it up. The, 
can mayors uh, join the national uh, political system? No. Uh, that's, not a, that's not a feeder. Uh, prefectural assemblies, local assemblies, yeah, that could be a feeder. Uh, but uh, once you've been in an executive position, uh, it's a heck of a lot nicer uh, than uh, being uh, a legislator. Uh, so I don't know if, of, uh, not for a long time. I mean, uh, Hoso, uh, no, Prime Minister Hosokawa, before he was Prime Minister and a member of the Diet, he was Governor of Kumamoto Prefecture. Uh, so he did make the jump into, uh, he started out in national politics, went, the jump, went to Kumamoto, and then went back into national politics. Uh, but that kind of route is really rare, and also I don't think it happens much anymore. I'll have to defer to the experts uh, who, who are here uh, uh, regarding that. Dr. Steele, do you know? Um, not offhand. I would agree with you. I can't think of anybody that springs to mind. Yeah, who does? Who, 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 once, once you become a prefectural governor, you get elected, and then you get reelected, and then you get reelected, and then you get reelected, and people say, is he really going to go for a fifth term? And he goes for the fifth term. Yeah. Uh, it, Nowhere else to go. No, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a steady job. You're the most popular person in the prefecture because it's, it's a popular election. Uh, you can say, hey, why not? Oh, yeah, governors just don't move. They, yeah, they, 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 st they sit still. 16 years, 20 years is, is a very normal uh, term of office for a, a governor. Any last question? Okay, we'll say, okay, so. See, you have the last word. Sure, uh, Steve Rose, long time listener, first time caller. Say what kind? See, you mentioned, you know, presumably up until the one year anniversary, nobody's going to be a play for, you know, the, the faction leader position. Well, they have been, but the, but but they've been beaten back by their their fellow uh, fellow ambitious individuals. So, so at the two year anniversary. If you had to place a bet or maybe a prognostication, are there is there a strong leader of the Seilokai that challenges Kushida, or the Seilokai split up into those separate factions no longer held together by an Abe kind of a leader? Thanks for asking that question, because I hadn't thought about it. And I think it's the latter. I think that this that uh, the Seilokai is right up near the, it's, it's close to the 100 uh, limit, which is the general instability point for factions. And that's when uh, ambitious people start to make their own plans. That's what happened to the Takeshita faction. Uh, and uh, it happened uh, before that to the Tanaka faction. I think it's now 98 members of the uh, Seiwakai. I, I'll have to ask those who, who keep track. Uh, and that's, that's when things start to split up. So I would guess the latter is more likely than a strong, single strong leader. Because it, it really, Abe was a great banyan tree. They used to say about Jawaharlal Nehru in India that Nehru was a banyan tree and nothing grows underneath him. And Abe was just that. Everybody else was munchkins. He was Snow White. Uh, they were all the, they were, they were, oh, I'm sorry, much, I'm, getting, I'm getting my things for, they were all, they were all dwarves. The Munchkins is from, from, yeah, I know, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the rivals right now are decidedly smaller individuals in terms of their political impact. Uh, so uh, actually the latter seems more likely because of the, the, uh, the, 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 the scale of the people who are, are fighting for power. It's a wonderful question. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you again for this wonderful presentation. I'd like to thank our audience. There can be no great presentations without a great audience. Yes, thank you, everyone. We have an event coming up next week on the rise of secular gurus. We have, at the end of the month, uh, Mike Mochizuki and Kuniko Ashizawa will talk about Japanese foreign and security policy. And in August, we have a session on 
uh, War for Area Diplomacy, and Kyle will add some other events that he's aware of. Yes, thank you, Robert. Um, I'm the director of the Institute of Robert. On um, July 18, Ron Zwegenberg from Penn State University is lecturing, uh, giving a book talk from a, a newly published book called Nuclear Minds. It's about the construction of the concept of PTSD, uh, Hiroshima and Baksha. And then on July 21st, uh, Akihiro Ogawa is giving a lecture on the anti-nuclear movement in Japan. It's a, also a book talk, a new, newly published book on that topic. Mm. So this will be on our event page on the ICS web. That's the great sociologist of Ogawa, right? A former TUJ student, and that was a head of Asian studies in Australia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you again. And thank you for uh, thank you everyone. to make this possible by taking care of the logistics and the planning. Even the post-visit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>